My name's Bill Charlap, and I'm a jazz pianist living in New York City. My father was Moose Charlap, the songwriter who was most famous for his work on Peter Pan, and he also wrote some songs which were recorded by such people as Joe Williams and Sarah Vaughan. My mother, Sandy Stewart, is a singer, and she worked with such people as Benny Goodman and was on the Perry Como show, Mitch Miller show, Gary Moore show, and has done a lot of studio work recently doing television commercials and stuff. We worked together sometimes, too. So there was always music in the house. My father passed away when I was seven years old, and my mother was remarried shortly after to a trumpet player by the name of George Trifon, who was in bands of Benny Goodman as well, and Les Brown, and quite a few others. So there was lots of music around the house, and an emphasis on songs, theater music, and that sort of stuff which was very influential on me as a young person. My career as a pianist pretty much started when I was uh, about 13 years old. I started playing at an acting company on Bond Street. It's an improv company. It took suggestions from the audience and I had to underscore whatever scene was going on. That was really the first gig that I had. And I had a bunch of groups in high school, I played with a gospel choir, and there were lots of musicians around and a certain very healthy competitiveness with kids who were very advanced. There were some kids I went to school with who I still play with to this day, like John Gordon, who is one of the great young alto saxophone players, in my opinion, in the world. He was great back then, and we started a group together near the end of high school, which had one of the bass players that's featured on this album, Sean Smith. I studied with some pretty important teachers for me at that time. There was a man by the name of Jack Riley, whose music and teaching still inspires me today, and a woman by the name of Eleanor Hancock, who was a great concert pianist and taught me a lot about sound and technique at the piano. Those were my most important teachers. But at the same time, Dick Hyman, who was a distant cousin of mine, heard me play when I was about 16 years old. I went over to his house. I was terrified, and I played for him, and he was kind enough to call me up every now and then and say, well, I'm doing this recording date here, or I'm doing this concert here, why don't you come along with me? And so that was really another kind of tutelage. Though it wasn't formal study, it was just as valuable, and I was able to learn quite a lot by seeing one of the pros of all pros work in all different kinds of situations. Since then, I've been honored and privileged to be able to play with Dick quite a lot. Another pianist who was very helpful to me and influential is Bill Mays, a great pianist who lives in New York City, who also shared a lot of himself with me as a musician. He was somebody who I hung around and saw in many different situations and learned a lot by kind of being on the sidelines and watching him take care of business. At the time I met Bill, he was playing with Jerry Mulligan and doing some other projects at the time. He wasn't able to continue on a steady basis with Jerry, so I was fortunate that Bill recommended me, and I ended up playing with Jerry for about two years, which was a great learning experience and great pleasure for me. He's a musician who's very influential to my concept. He has a truly original melodic gift and thinks like an arranger, which he is, of course, but I learned a lot from that being around his musical energy. This album features some of the work I like to do as a leader in a variety of contexts. The duo tracks on this record are with Sean Smith. Sean is probably my deepest musical relationship with one of my peers. We really grew up together musically and as people and we have a great trust that exists in our duo that I really have almost exclusively with Sean in the way that it is. So I'm very proud to offer some of our efforts here. He is not just a fine bassist, but also a fine composer. One of his compositions is featured on this album, which is called Has This Song Been Written For You Before, which he wrote for his mother, Patty. I first played with Ron Vincent with Jerry Mulligan. Since then, Ron and I have played a lot together. He played when I was doing about a five-week stint with my mother at Michael's Pub. And we started to play together in a trio context, and he's a very sensitive accompanist and soloist, and really gives a lot to the music. I'm very proud of his work on this CD. Andy Ulau is a bassist I played with since high school. He's got a very beautiful, earthy sort of sound, and gives a lot to the music of the trio as well. 
The solo cuts on this album, I'll Be Around and Lonely Town, were done at a live concert at Steinway Hall a concert which was produced by the Piano Stylist and Jazz Workshop, which is a magazine which I've written some articles for, and they produced that concert over at Steinway Hall. The sound in there is just really breathtaking. The tunes on this album are as follows. Green Dolphin Street is played by a lot of jazz musicians. It's very attractive harmonically to what we like to do, and that was just really a sound check at the trio date, but it had a nice feeling on it and I decided that it would be nice to include. Along With Me is a song by Harold Rome, a composer who is most known for the show I Can Get It For You Wholesale. This tune is a very unique composition. It's very attractive harmonically and has a beautiful melody line and a great lyric too. That's a song that was taught to me by Richard Rodney Bennett, one of my favorite musicians in the world and the veritable storehouse for great tunes, well-known and not so well-known. Also is a great composer. He's a real Renaissance man. I Was Telling Her About You is a song that was written by my father, Moose Charlap. That's a tune that was recorded by Joe Williams and Nancy Wilson and a host of others. Also, I just recorded it with my mother, which is a particularly heartfelt rendition for me and for her. It also features my stepfather on trumpet on there and my brother, who is a fine bassist. Ron Vincent rounds out the group on drums. The next tune on the record is Has This Song Been Written For You Before by Sean Smith. A very beautiful original melody. Next is Early To Bed, which is a song written by Richard Rodney Bennett and Franklin Underwood. That's a tune I've heard Richard perform at a club which is sadly closed called Jay's, which was a wonderful place where the owner appreciated all different types of performers. Richard is, in my opinion, probably the greatest at sitting at the piano and accompanying himself and singing. The next song is from the Steinway Hall concert, that's Lonely Town by Leonard Bernstein. Such a unique tune, like all of his work is. The harmony is very unusual, the way that it moves, and the tune to me has a certain darkness that is just built into it if you just play the melody and the harmony exactly as it was written. Next is Gone with the Wind, an old standard. This is a duo cut and it shows Sean and I doing things like trading phrases together and kind of opening up on the form, though the form always remains strict and intact. We're kind of stretching our musical envelope unlike anything else on the album. It's like a real conversation when we do that, and that really is an innovation of the great bassist Red Mitchell. Red is a real hero of both mine and Sean's, and has been a great influence on how we see duo playing and the type of melodic invention that we like to do. Next is I Don't Stand a Ghost of the Chance with You. This has a line which I wrote in the beginning of it, and Sean is playing with the bow. On the last eight of that tune, there are some chords that I heard great pianist in New York City plays with Jim Hall right now by the name of Larry Goldings use. I hope that Larry doesn't mind that I borrowed those chords from him there, the way that he voiced them. I thought they were very beautiful. Next is Donna Lee. That's a, of course, Charlie Parker tune that is really a bebop anthem. And the last tune on the record is I'll Be Around, a beautiful song by Alec Wilder. It's funny, when I was playing that tune, that's also from the live concert at Steinway Hall. I was used to playing a little faster, and I remember I started it out thinking, oh, geez, this tempo really should have been faster. And what I noticed was, as I was sitting there, I said to myself, no, no, this is really okay. And when I heard it back, I really liked it, because it really had a quality that was different than how I had been playing it. It was almost an American hymn or something like that. That's how it sounded to me. Now when I play it, I never play it faster than that tempo. I hope you enjoy this CD. Thank you for listening.